I live just outside of a tiny village in east central Wisconsin called Iola. And, and a lot of people have heard of Iola because every year they have an old car show there. Uh, it's, Iola is a village of 1,301 people. And uh, every year, thank you, every year about 100,000 people show up in the second weekend in July. Uh, so that's when a lot of us who, who live in Iola go on vacation <laughs> so that we aren't around for the old car show. Um, but it's a, it's, it's a wonderful event. Uh, but again, you can go to my website. You can see images from these programs. You can send me emails. You can you can send images as attachment. It seems like everyone's got more stuff and more questions about their stuff. So I'm I'm happy to follow up uh, on the programs. The other point that I always like to make at the beginning of my of my events is that this is not a buying opportunity for me. I never offer to buy or sell on a commission. It's just, you know, I'm, there's nothing wrong with that. You know, there's nothing wrong with someone, you know, trying to find a bargain and turning around and, and making money on it. That's what an antique dealer does. Uh, I'm not a dealer. All, this is all I do. These, these appraisal events, nope, that's fine. Uh, these appraisal events are all that I do, and uh, I can barely keep up. I, I am, I'm now booking programs two years in advance. Uh, I already have a program booked for... Uh, it's, it's either, I think it's April 2015. That's the, that's the first one I already have booked for 2015. But this is, this is, I think, my sixth or seventh or eighth program in Minnesota. I was up in the, doing programs for Washington County in Matamidi and Forest Lake and Cottage Grove. I was also down in uh, La Crescent, Caledonia, um, I'll be in Fridley next year. I'll be in St. Cloud, I think. Yeah, I'll be somewhere. So I think I'm, I think I'll be in St. Cloud. So, um, uh, but th these programs have proven to be just amazingly popular, and I think part of the reason is that people know that I'm here to provide information. I'm not trying to to pick up a bargain. Um, we were talking a little earlier about Antiques Roadshow. I was back on the tour this year. Uh, which was always a lot of fun. And um, I was in Kansas City and Knoxville and Richmond, Virginia. So those programs will be airing in just a the, the, the new season will be starting in just a few weeks in January. So uh, you may see me uh, on the program there. And you can also, there are links to my videos uh, on, on my, from my website, right to, right to uh, PBS. So... Um, no matter how many of these programs I do, I never know how much I know until I'm presented with a question or a puzzle or a challenge. So, let's see how much I know. Tom, Mikey. That's a lot of chair. Where did, where did you get this chair? I bought it in an auction. Okay. Um, did they tell you anything about it? Okay. Um, there was a company that uh, made chairs that looked a lot like this called the Hunzinger Company. And they made chairs with, this, with these crazy spiral uh, uh, you know, braces uh, and arms and spindle backs. And um, they also made a, a, a stick and ball motif chair. Uh, this is, I think, mostly maple. Well, the arm, that arm actually looks like it's oak. Interesting. It has what's called an aniline die to make it look like mahogany. Okay. Uh, but it's a less expensive wood. Now, um, have you done anything to the surface at all? If you were to, oftentimes people think that refinishing furniture hurts the value. In, in 99 cases out of 100, it doesn't hurt the value one single bit. However, in this case, because it has an aniline die on, on hardwood, oak, and maple, uh, if you were to refinish it, it would come out a really, really bright, kind of an iridescent red, which I don't think would, would look very good on, on this particular chair. The back is all inlaid with a uh, little mother of pearl. There's some, of, some missing. There's a, little, there's a little, you know, paint decoration. Um... 
if this was a signed Hunzinger rocker, and, and as far as you know, there's no signature on it. There's no label. No. Very few of them are, are signed. Um, if this was a signed Hunziker or Hunzinger rocker, uh, you'd probably be looking at oh, three or four hundred dollars today. Can I ask what you paid for it? Thirty-five dollars. Thirty-five dollars. Well, I think that was a good investment. Um, it's a beautiful rocker. It's in great condition. It looks like it's nice and tight. There's been no repairs. There's been no breakage. Um, I would say 135 is a is a fair price for it. So, thanks for bringing it. Thank you. Okay, Heidi, Mikey, so you brought me you brought me a big blue plate. I did. The blue plate special. How did you How did you get this? I bought an antique store. You did. Mm -hmm. What did they tell you about it when you bought it? That they thought that it was an antique Chinese dish. Okay, okay. It is. It's Chinese. Um, I'm not sure how much age is on it. It's a it's a Chinese what they call transferware. In other words, all of this design is laid on like a decal, okay. and then glazed over. Yeah, and you can see that it was done. It was done fairly quickly. I mean, there are little breaks and gaps in the in the decoration, but you know you've got all of this wonderful spinning wheel designs all around and and the, the big big flowing design and then on the back these are also a transfer that's, that was not done by hand oh. so um i would say probably early 20th century but i believe that it's 20th century uh it's in wonderful condition how do you use it in your home do, or it's do you just, just sitting there it's just sitting there okay <laughs> um uh you know it, it, this has what they call a dry foot, a dry foot ring. So there's no glaze there, and it's and it's quite white. And I think that you know there's a way that age sits on a piece. I would think that if this was more than a hundred, I mean a lot more than a hundred years old, that there would be some uh, discoloration. It wouldn't it wouldn't look quite that fresh. So I think what we have here is a is a, a Chinese transferware charger in a blue and white design but less than I would say probably less than a hundred years old but still I would I would still say um, early 20th century uh, so can I ask what you paid for it? forty dollars forty dollars well I still think that that was a good investment um, I don't know if you could double your money but I think pretty close Maybe sixty or seventy dollars would be a fair price. This is a this is a, a glazed piece. I mean, you could use this for food if you wanted to. It's it's not like it has a lead glaze on it or anything. It's a beautiful, beautiful plate. It's just that when you look at the design, this was made very quickly to look like a a, a more complex or an older an older design. So, um, the thing to remember about Chinese antiques and art and artifacts today is that that the, the 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 market the chinese market is just is constantly changing and shifting chinese authorities just shut down a museum a small private museum that had 40,000 objects in it because they believed that pretty much everything in it was fake mm -hmm. they just shut they, this just happened in in the last couple months so um you know, it's a lovely piece, and I think that you paid a fair, a fair price for it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Justin Paget. Let's just set that up on the table. We were we were looking at this at this earlier. Um, I love this painting. Uh, tell me how you got this. I got this in Charlotte, North Carolina, at a antique expo. Okay, and it was were they. Other examples of, of Russian art there. She dealt. The dealer dealt primarily in Russian art. Okay. Now, and you've got some information. This yep. is That's this is Vasily okay. Kuzmik Komolov, and um, and his and his wife is uh, Paulina. And she's also uh, recognized art. Very much in the you know the the Soviet school. I mean these these people 
the, these artists were uh, given very little leeway. They were working within a system of creating these. Um, this is mid 20th century, isn't it? Is it is it 50s? 19, is it 50s or 60s? 1968. 68. Perfect. Perfect. Absolutely. Um, I love the I love the impasto, which is the weight of the paint on the canvas. It's very very thick and very you know, quickly applied, but, but applied with great assurance. Um, I love the palette. I love everything about it. It's just a really, really wonderful painting. Is that kind of what you saw in it too? Now you had the mentioned, heavy detail. Yeah, yeah, you had mentioned that this is on this is on a very. It's, it's, it's a very, board. It is. Is it board or is yeah, it canvas? It's board. Okay. Um, and there's a little crack down here. That's very, very minor. I wouldn't worry about that. Um, there's a good, I mean, if, if at some point you wanted to take it to a, a restore, that would be an easy repair. It doesn't need to be cleaned. Um, can I ask what you paid for it? Mm, either 250 or 600 I'm not sure which. Okay. Uh, well, I can, package deal. I can tell you, I can tell you, I can tell you that if you, if you paid 250 that that is about right for some of Komolov's paintings. And I... And I'll show you here, just to compare, because his work is so distinctive. And he often does um, landscapes. Uh, he does not off, uh, always do uh, portraiture. I mean, here is, here's a little painting by Komolov, mm -hmm. right there. Um, portrait of a woman, how a uh, lady in winter, 6 by 10. And it's sold for... $225. So tiny, just a, a fraction of the size of this. Very nice. But you can see that the, the style is identical. Absolutely identical. Um, one more here. I just want to show you this. Here is here's another one by there again. Very same palette. He, he really likes those ochres and the yellows and the and the you know the earthy colors. Um, he died in 1985, and that also sold for uh, $225. So, 300, two and a quarter. Um, there's another one. I would say, if you if your memory seems to think that maybe you paid as much as $600, I don't think that that was a, a bad price at all. I think I think that. Um, I think that would have been a fair price. I think it might have been a strong price. How long mm -hmm. ago was this? 2005, maybe. Okay, okay. Not um, too long ago. Yeah, yeah. No, it's a wonderful painting. I think, I think, I love it. I absolutely love it. Thanks for bringing Great. it. Thank you. You betcha. All right. Laurie Paul. It's a it pin, is. it's a pin shaped like a violin. I was wondering if it was a violin or a guitar. It's a, it's a, it's a, uh, I think it's, I think it might be, it might be, it almost looks like a lute, because it does have a hole, but it has a, it has a, you know, a prof, a, the profile of a violin. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Actually, it looks like Paul McCartney's Hofner bass, uh -huh. is what it looks like. Yeah, yeah, that's what it is. There you go. <laughs> so how did you get this? I think it might have been my grandmother's. I found it in one of her old jewelry boxes. Okay, it's marked Spain. Mm -hmm. That's what um, I, I think it's copper and uh, with enamel. Now the enamel decoration here on the top, that what they would do enamel, of course, is just powdered glass, mm -hmm. and they would they mix it with lavender oil, and they just very carefully paint it right on there. Um, uh, the the craftsmen who make these, oh. yeah. Um, this looks fairly contemporary. I mean, it could be could it be nineteen fifties or sixties? Yeah, or older. Yeah. yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah, there's a way that age sits on a piece, and I'm not sure that this has age much greater than that. Although the clasp, yeah, could be, but it was clearly made in Spain for the Western market. Because it doesn't, it says Spain rather than España, mm. so it wasn't for it wasn't for domestic uh, consumption. Um, do you ever wear it? No. No, I, you should. I didn't know if it was. 
Yeah. <laughs> worth anything. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, in ter what's it worth? The thing is with costume jewelry, if it's if it's marked with the maker's name, mm -hmm. that it, 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 there's a market for it. Unmarked costume jewelry, and I mean, in this case, beyond saying that it's made in Spain, mm -hmm. it's tougher market. I mean, I think if you saw this in a in an antique shop, it would probably be fifteen or twenty dollars, mm -hmm. something like that. So, mm -hmm. it's a lovely little pin, though. Okay. Thanks for bringing it. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, uh, Helen Bauman. That's pretty. Whoa, that's okay. No harm done. No harm done. So how did you how did you get this lovely little set? It was passed down from my grandma's. Okay. Well, it's marked hand painted and it says Nippon. Mm -hmm. And I and I and I think anyone who's familiar with Nippon uh, porcelain would have could spot that a mile away. Um, you know, Nippon, of course, is uh, people think that that's some people think that that's the name of the company that made it, and of course, Nippon is what Japan was called before the 1860s. So, uh, in the late 19th century, and then well into the 20th century, uh, several factories were making beautiful Nippon porcelain. This probably dates from 1915. Does that make sense in terms of? when it might have come into your family? It could have been. Okay. Um, uh, gilt uh, with, with raised decoration. Anytime you have uh, uh, oriental porcelain or pottery that has a raised decoration, then you can feel it. That's called moriaga. It's just a generic term that refers to a raised design on oriental porcelain. These have been well well used i mean you can see the gilding is worn off the 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 handles here so i mean it's not so often these, these just end up in a, in a cupboard or in a cabinet and never get touched um this is all hand painted and it's not a transfer design it's beautiful it's beautiful um so i mean it's it's about 100 years old uh is it part of a larger set or are these the only pieces you only have pieces. the only pieces okay um, they're lovely. They are they're well worn, uh, but they're in good shape. I would say if you saw these in an antique shop, you'd probably be looking. They'd probably be priced about thirty dollars for the pair, but you'd probably be able to buy them for between twenty and twenty-five dollars. Okay. So, they're beautiful. Thanks for Thank bringing. You. Them. Thank okay. you. Okay, uh, Sharon Fasini. I know that this um, is a painting on copper. Right. It was in my father-in-law's family. It's been passed down. And that's pretty much all I know about it. OK. OK. Well, uh, except I, they said it may have dated back to the Renaissance, so I don't know. Um, you know, it's, the, it's, difficult, it's difficult to tell because it, it, the, the Renaissance painters did paint on copper. Okay. And you know, this would have been a a popular subject for them. It's the it's it's the the legend there's a legend of someone bringing the fruit the a, a bird that brings the fruit to a and I can't think of what it is but it's from it's from mythology. Um It's absolutely wonderful. So you've got the you've got the crow here bringing the bringing the uh, the fruit to the to the starving man um, it's profoundly dirty mm -hmm. it would it would benefit from a good cleaning okay uh, and let me just see the back there okay yeah uh, you can see copper plate um, having said that it's it's anonymous but I really like it I think that I think that it I don't know if it's Renaissance era I don't know if it's you know Six or seven hundred years old, but okay. it's, it's. I think it's the work of a of. A, they would consider it an old master painting, a little study. Um, so, you know, factoring in the cleaning, the cleaning of something like this would be pretty straightforward. You wouldn't have to touch it up. But I'll bet you would. I think you would be amazed at what you would find underneath all this dirt and grime. Hundred, you know, hundreds of years of dirt and grime. Um, I think that's a wonderful little painting. I, I if I owned this, I wouldn't sell it for less than five hundred dollars. Okay. I think it's just absolutely wonderful. 
Okay. Uh, and I don't think it would cost that much to have it cleaned. Okay. I recommend a really good restorer in Milwaukee, Landmarks Gallery. I mean, this this you could, you know, put in an envelope with some with some reinforcement and mail it off to them, and they could clean it and send it back to you. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. That's a wonderful little painting. Okay, Ernie. Do you have a favorite this of one. them? This one? Okay. This one I like. Okay. I think that's a good choice because this one is a is a is a, a pretty common yeah yeah transfer where not a whole lot of value here. This okay. is this is very pretty. This is very pretty. So this is clearly marked on the back. Uh, uh, Tiffany and Company. Is this part of a larger set? I have twelve dishes. You have twelve dishes like this. Um, it says made in England, and there's a style number on it, and it says New York, made in England. This is this is uh, Minton for Tiffany. Uh, absolutely wonderful. How did you get this? Uh, both of these are my dad's. Okay. Um, are they all in? You know, in this shape. good good condition. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I never used them. <laughs> well, and you know that's kind of the problem with with beautiful pieces like this. And again, we, this is all decorated with enamel. You can feel those, and all the the little the little roses here. That's not those are not transfers. That's all painted by hand. The gilding here is done with a with with a stencil, but everything else is done by hand. The thing is that that when you have beautiful china like this. Uh, uh, if you can't put it in the dishwasher, nope. and you can't put it in the microwave, <laughs> kids, the kids today have no interest in this stuff. They want it, they just want it, you know, a little, uh, you know, quick and easy. Um, they probably use a scouring pad. They, oh gosh, <laughs> wouldn't that be, wouldn't that be a crime? Um, so, uh, still, very, very, very collectible. Um, now this has a lovely gilt decoration all the way around the edge. Uh, and in general, when you come across um, sets of mittens, and you said you had 12 of these. Yes, sir. Here is 12 minton nine inch bowls sold by Tiffany right there. Yep. Uh, now the decoration on these are, is more complex but these sold for $125 for the whole set. Now that just does that's just not enough. You know, that's just where the market is for these okay. just of the, because of the the point that we just made. But I think that because yours is a little more involved, a little fancier, um I would say I'm going to double that. I'm going to say for for uh, the the 12 of them about about 250 Okay. $250 for the set. Right. They're just absolutely gorgeous. Thank you. Thanks for bringing them. Um, Kristen. So I have this whole set. Okay. The whole serving set, the plates, the tea set, the serving you've dishes got, for eight. And, you've, and, it's, and it's got all the extra serving pieces, mm -hmm. you said. It's beautiful. And you know what? It, because it's so simple, we should say this is Royal Dalton. Mm -hmm. this, is, this is Lace Point. Uh, this is a high-fired, vitreous china meant to stand up to, to wear. I mean, this is not, you know, bone china or eggshell. This is, this is meant to be, could be used every single day. How did you get this? It was a wedding gift to my parents in the 70s. Sure. And when my father passed away, my mom gave me the set. So she had kind of been, over the years, collecting all of the pieces for it. And I've never used it. It's never been used just because I wasn't sure. You know, um, if I should. It, no, you should use it. it, it it's, it's, you know, beautiful stuff. Um, but again, uh, it's not the kind of thing that, you know, I mean, after the dinner, you have to put it in the sink and wash it. You can't, mm -hmm. you know, put it in the dishwasher. You can't put it in the microwave, things like that. Um, yeah, absolutely beautiful. And in, in, you know, in wonderful condition and because it's so simple because it's so plain it it's actually a lot more adaptable a lot more mm -hmm. popular today I would say so you've got a service for 12 for Did, eight. Oh, for eight I'm mm -hmm. sorry um, uh, I, 
I would say probably three hundred, four hundred dollars somewhere in there. I think that would be a fair price. Um, but use it, you know, let it get it out now and again. And you know, I mean, next week Thanksgiving, that's a perfect time. I thought about that. Yeah, <laughs> I would. I absolutely would. Because again, otherwise it just ends up sitting in a cupboard or in a box, and and no one gets to use them. Yeah, so. that's what it's been happening. Yeah, it's just been in a big tub. So. Yeah. Thanks for bringing them. Thank you. Okay. Um, Pete, Otto. Good. Let's turn it around. And let let our audience at home uh, look at it. So, how did you how did you get this? Neighbor lady, of mine needed money really bad. And okay. I just gave her some money to help her out. Oh well, that was nice. Um, these little you know shadow box shrines uh, were very popular. You know, late 19th and early 20th century. This probably dates from about 1890. Um, they, you could order these through a catalog. Uh, some of them have the crucifixion. Some of them have the Holy Family showing, you know, Jesus as a as a young man. Uh, some of them show the Nativity. Um, uh, and again, these were, you know, used. They were they were basically home shrines. The, the fact of the antiques trade today, and really for some time, is that objects like this that have a religious connotation, when looked at it, for just from a, a monetary standpoint, are considered a tough sell. So you, you helped the woman out by buying this. Can I ask yeah. what you gave her for it? 20 bucks. 20 bucks. I think that was exactly right, the right price. I think that was a very fair price for it. Um, it's about what you would see it for in an antique shop mm -hmm. today. You might see it for more, but, you know, priced more. But in, in the antiques trade, there's the there's the talking price yep. and there's the walking right. price. <laughs> and until it walks out the door, you can talk all you want to yep. about what it should be worth. And I think the, I think the walking price for this is, yes. was 20 bucks. I think that was exactly right. Yep. Okay. Thanks for bringing it. Yep, thank you. Okay. And Ted Byrne. Epiphone guitar, semi-solid, and I bought it in about 1961, and I think that Epiphone was sold to Gibson, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, yeah. I don't like them anymore. So do you play this? <laughs> well, I have. Okay. It's, it's a beautiful thing. It's just an, I mean, it's got this wonderful, you know, sunburst top. It's got the, it's got the, the double cutaway, um, <coughs> and... 61 was a very good year for for these. Um, <coughs> hey, that's pretty, that's that's pretty good. It's hold it's holds its tune. Um, I'm just going to ask you to hold that right there. Uh, now they sometimes call these. Uh, this is the is this the casino model? Do you remember? Yes. Because the Epiphone Casino is a very, very highly regarded guitar. Yeah, I think it is. I can't quite tell. Okay, it looks like okay. It's a um, but this is a this is a semi hollow body electric, and I love the sunburst finish. The condition is uh, just amazing. Um, so. You you when you whenever you played it you must have been pretty careful with it. Pretty much. Yeah. Good. Um, Sixty one. That was a pretty darn good year. So we've got this is the double cutaway. They reproduced this in the nineties. Uh, so do you remember what you paid for? I mean, did you, you bought it new? <coughs> you bought it new. I in bought 60, it brand new. Yes. In, in sixty one. Yes. Do you remember what you paid for uh, it? I think it was about two fifty. Two fifty. Um, well, here's one, a casino. Now, this one's from 66. Doesn't have the pick guard on it, but it has the, the, let me see the front again. Yeah, it has the color, it has the, the right color. it has the double pickups. This has the, this has the, uh, this has the, uh, the, the, the bar on it, which yours does not have. Um, it, it seems like. The cutaways, this this is a little smoother and those are a little sharper, it looks like. Yeah. Yeah, possibly. Possibly, but it's still a casino. Uh that one sold in twenty eleven for sixteen hundred dollars. 
And if you look down the line here at all the casinos, 1,400, uh, 850, 850, 1,800, uh, 1,000, and this is just going back two or three years. Mm -hmm. So I would say at least $1,000, I would say. It's a beauty. Thank you. Thanks for bringing it. Now, now uh, Ted, there, there was also a Victrola listed here. Yes, right. It's mahogany. It's a, it's a beauty. And that's what it was when I bought it. So. Right, the the one door on the on the vent missing. So it it is a it is a a Victrola absolutely. Now it looks like it looks like there was some pretty significant damage done here on the inside. And it was that way when you got it? Yes, it was. What? I wonder what the heck they were yeah. trying to do. <laughs> I, just, I just don't know. Unless there was some kind of venting over the, over the speaker, and that's what this is. This is, this is the speaker. Um, so this is a mahogany Victrola uh, from right around the turn of the century. Does it work? Oh, yes, it does. It does. It's fine. And so you've got the reproducer, and you've got a needle for it, and it's all Several. it's all good to go. Got okay. some records over there if you want to hear one. Well, sure, we could you could <laughs> we could crank it up here. I think that's enough for you. <laughs> so how did you get this? I bought it from a neighbor. This just wanted to get rid of it. Okay. And so you bought it from a neighbor, and what what did you give him, can I ask? $25. $25, and it was just in this condition exactly. when you bought it. Yes. Okay. If it was in if it was in mint condition, working order, it would be about 175 200 bucks. This one has has had some significant changes right. done to it. I'm gonna, but I'm still gonna say um, 75 to 100 dollars. I think that I think sold it, sold. Okay, <laughs> we'll have an auction right now. Okay, carry, done. That is a pretty groovy little bowl. Yeah, it's, it is. <laughs> how did you how did you get this little bowl? Well, it was actually left in the back of a cupboard of a little log cabin I lived in in Washington State uh -huh. some, like, forty years ago. Okay. And I have just I took it with me and it's been with me ever since. It's um, it's bronze, um, and it says it, it and it it says that it's African and it it may be. Uh, it may be Egyptian. Uh, it has these stylized fish around the top. It also has a scorpion, which is interesting, which makes me think that it's, that it's uh, you know, uh, there might be something relating to the desert. Um, how do you use this? I have always kept little things in it, paintbrushes sure. and glitter and whatever. I'm sure. an artist, so it sure. sits on my drawing um, table. It has a wonderful tactile quality to it. It's got a, a nice soft uh, uh, patina, very worn. I think it's trying to look older than it is. I think that it is, I think that it, when you found it, I don't think it was terribly old. I think it's 20, it's definitely 20th century. Mm -hmm. um, it's odd that it has these very stylized fish forms all the way around, and they're, and they're crudely done, mm -hmm. you know, uh, but then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, there's that one scorpion, which is just in the in the bottom, also textured. It's very nice. I think, I think that it's the type of piece that someone would have brought back as a souvenir from visiting North Africa or the Middle East. Um, I think today, if you wanted to buy this in an antique shop, 
thirty to forty dollars, something something like that. Okay. Um, it's a lovely little bowl, but I think it's definitely uh, trying to look older than it really is. Mm -hmm. Even it, at even at the time that it was purchased yeah. or whatever. Right, yeah. right. Yeah. It's a lovely thing. Yeah, I I love it. I've yeah. always been curious about it. Yeah, it's beautiful. Thank okay. you. Sure. Okay. Thank you. It's time for Gail Finn. Finny. Look at that. So, yeah, if you want to put it on the yep. table so everyone can see it and the boys with the cameras can see it well. Um, it's, a very, it's a very pretty picture of a, of a, of a little girl. Um, if you look at it very closely under a magnifying glass, you'll see that the image is made up of a very fine dot pattern. Oh, okay. And, and I'll, I'll show you here. You can look right underneath. You can look very, very closely. I don't know if you can see that. It's made up of a oh very tiny dot pattern, and that's the hallmark of a photomechanical print. Oh, okay. So a photomechanical print is a picture of a picture. So they took the original painting. Um, you know, this looks like it's, like it's uh, something from uh, the, the French Revolution. Uh, you know, and and they they photographed it in such a way that it could be, that it could be printed on a printing press, run off in large numbers. Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, and because it is a because of the medium, because of the way it was produced. Mm -hmm. um, well, sometimes on Antiques Roadshow we talk in code. Okay. <laughs> one of the one of the code phrases that we use is. Well, it has decorative value, <laughs> and that and that means that if you if you want to display it in, yes. in your home and enjoy it, that's wonderful. Uh, just don't expect to make a lot of money on it. It's Wait. a it's a wonderful photo mechanical yeah, print okay. that you that you had. It was in it was in the house, right? Yeah, in my parents' house. Is and I don't know if it's one of my relatives or right. whatever, but it does have this on the back. Then uh huh. Is that what does it say? Master. Master Hair by Sir Joshua. Yeah, Sir Joshua Reynolds was the the original, original? the original okay. painter. Right. Okay. Uh, Joshua Reynolds was the was the leader of the tra very traditional British school of painting. Okay. Um, and and he he kind of dictated how all the other painters should paint. They resented this, and okay. and so they, his name was Joshua Reynolds, and they called him Sir Sloshua. Because he, he he thought he used up too much paint and you know yeah, so the whole thing. yeah yeah oh. especially the pre Raphaelite painters who were just a bunch of punks you know and then they wanted to they 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 thought that that they they should be much more natural sure. rather than this kind of idealized uh, work so very pretty picture Richard. not a great amount of value thank you very much okay thank you Cindy Cindy Hello. Z is next look at this That's me. what did you what did you bring me. I brought you some kind of a little vase. Okay. It's very, very pretty. It's very pretty. And it's very clearly marked on mm -hmm. the bottom. Again, it's a Nippon. Mm -hmm. So, but this is in a, in a very, a very kind of a Moorish design. Uh, uh, you know, it's, it's, again, the same era very early in the 20th century, probably 1910 to 1915. It's an absolutely gorgeous little piece in wonderful condition. And, a, and, a, and a, at least 100 years old, I would say. Very nice. Wow. It's interesting to, to note that it's not symmetrical. I mean, in this side, they've got three little bell flowers. Mm -hmm. And on that side, they've got four, a four petal flower. Um, that's an $80 vase. Wow. Yeah, it's just gorgeous. My, my son rescued that from a box um, that relatives were going to throw out. It used to belong to a great Aunt Loretta. Uh-huh. And it was in, in a box that was going, and my, and my son pulled it out of there. Good for him. So. <laughs> Thank Good you. Good for him. Thanks for bringing it. So, hi. Hi. Aha. Uh -huh. Oh my goodness. So once there's one, what's in the other box? Bunch of bones. Okay. Oh, cribbage board. Sure. Sure. And these are all 
These are all walrus, I think. I think so. Ivory. How did you get these? My uncle lived in Alaska most of his life, and then he passed away. So then I got got him. This this is this is a wonderful. I mean, this is a big walrus tusk, mm -hmm. and it's decorated all over in very very fine uh, scrimshaw design with Inuit scenes mm -hmm. of um, you know they're drying. You know you can see th you know things uh, drying skins. There's a whale. There's various fish. Here's a sled dog, um, a sled being pulled by dogs. It is just absolutely wonderful. Um, and then these two pieces are m a little more touristy. Uh, this is a, this shows, you know, a kind of a fish form, cribbage board, and there's one with the seal, kind of like a harp seal uh, on there. So, um, but the 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 big the big tusk is just absolutely gorgeous. Um, let's see. So do you? I mean, you have these beautiful, clearly custom made boxes. Uh, do they stay yeah. in the boxes? I made just made the boxes a couple of months ago. Oh, okay. Absolutely gorgeous. Is there any? Is there any locations? In other words, do you know specifically? Where these might have originated? No, uh, no he was up, he lived up in, like in Fairfax, Alaska, most of the okay. Most of his life. Okay, um, it, it, here to compare. There's a couple of cribbage boards. Mm -hmm. See, the the designs are very common. It's got mm -hmm. the little seal head there. I mean, there's a walrus tusk mm -hmm. that's also been made into a cribbage board. Mm -hmm. I mean, here's one. Where there's and you can see the same kind, of, the same degree of discoloration that you have here. Mm -hmm. This one has a bear. It has a seal. It has a lot going on. These pieces are uh, just a, maybe mm -hmm. a couple hundred for the pair. Maybe a mm -hmm. little bit more. Mm -hmm. That this one, that's a that's a that's a five hundred dollar tusk. Oh, mm -hmm. Maybe a little more. Mm -hmm. Maybe mm -hmm. a little more. All right, now Lee Ellison. Sorry, I'm late. But That's okay. We were talking about there. you. Holy moly. <laughs> That's heavy, too. That is heavy. Yep. That is a fabulous, fabulous presentation piece. How did you get this? My husband inherited it from his uncle. His uncle's name was James Ellison, and I believe he was a millionaire. Uh-huh. Because he lived on Lake Harriet Boulevard, I know. Okay. I never met the man. And we've had it 60 years, and it has an E on it for yep. our, la our last name. That's all I know. I it suspect is, it might be Mexican. It, it could be. It could very well be. It is, a, it is a, a, a beautiful example of a silver overlay vase. And, yep. it, and it, it is. It, and, it, and it is heavy. This is all sterling. Yeah. Sterling silver. It has not a mark, uh, I mean, a sign or a signature. Oh, any. isn't that frustrating? It is. The, 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 the Mexican silversmiths in Tasco, uh, Mexico, would have done work of this quality. I think it's, I think it's more European. Mm -hmm. it's, very, it's, it's, it's very much in the Art Nouveau style, mm -hmm. which would be European, you know, 18, well, European. 1890 yeah. to 1910. Does that make sense yes, in terms it, of? Yeah. But it is so big. It has these three handles. It's it's a very imposing piece. How how I do you display this? Standing in my china closet. Okay. <laughs> um, it it it's very fragile, and I believe that it, that it's. Uh, the difference between the temperature, like if you put some warm water in it, right? You hear that glass crackling. Yep. And yep. so, if I put flowers in it, I have to put another jar inside it with the water. Right. And then don't right. put a water. And, and right now it's very cold. Yes, I yeah, thought you that. <laughs> you wouldn't. You wouldn't want to put anything. You wouldn't want to put anything in it now. I, I'll hold it uh, close to me. <laughs> that's a good idea. That's a good it's, idea. It's been it is just an absolutely. Uh, gorgeous example of turn of the century 
you know, silver overlay. It's <laughs> it's a big, imposing. It's the kind of piece that someone would have presented. I think that it's a it may be a presentation piece in in honor of yeah. service or work or something like that. Um, that um, could be. It's a one of a kind piece. Uh, you know, a I mean, here. Here's a big, gorgeous, yeah. silver overlay vase. Um, what does it say about this? Uh, hold on, and that was and that was a few years ago. Uh, silver overlay with tapering sides, clear glass with an amber strip at the base. Uh, deer in forest, no monogram. Uh, Fourteen and a half inches tall. You know the the height is about the same as this one. That sold for three hundred dollars, but I think this one is 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 better than that. Mm -hmm. um, I absolutely love it. <laughs> I absolutely love it. I think I'll give I, you the paper bag and the plastic bag, and you yeah. can take it with you. Well, yeah, I, I'd love to, I'd love to own it. Uh, but you know, as I as I said in the program, I never offered to to buy or sell on a commission at my Good. programs. Yeah. So, uh, four hundred between four and five hundred dollars, I would say. It's just fabulous. Thank you. Thanks uh, for bringing it. I'll take good care of it. Please, I know you will. <laughs> I know you will. Oh, it's freezing cold. Yeah, yeah, that's okay. Just keep uh, it warm. <laughs> Thank you much. Okay. Um, let's see, Bob Sellers. Look at that. Look at that girl. Interesting. So, how did this come in? How did how did this young lady come into your life? Sixty years ago, I painted a lady's bathroom in a hallway. Uh huh. And I, they were using it for a doorstop. And really? I, and I said, "Boy, I would like that." She says, "If you paint the steps going downstairs, I'll give it to you." As a as a as a bonus. Yes. Isn't so, that something? So I've had it over sixty years. Well, it's a. Um, oh. I don't know if it's if it's bronze. No, I. It might be. It might be bronze. Sometimes these pieces are made out of what's called spelter, and spelter is a is a inexpensive alternative to bronze. Uh, it's it's lighter weight, uh, but this has this has some it's good heavier, heft to it. It does have some. The name is on there, but it, I can never could read it. It's it, and it looks like it's B E T L I. I wonder if. I, let me B E. It might be B E L L I. Hold on here, just a minute. Hold on, just a minute. It's it's you know, it dates from right around the right around the turn of the century, 1890, um, and it was at a time when uh, many French artists were. Uh, you know, doing pieces that that you know uh, honored peasant life and working in a, and rural life and uh, farm men and women. Um, uh, and this is this is an example of that. I love the way she's just sort of got her arm resting in the in the crook of that that little hay fork. Very, very nice. Um, I think it's bronze. I don't think it's spelter. Spelter is lighter weight, and it's also very, very easily damaged. Um, and this one is in is in just fabulous condition. Um, hold on here, just a minute. If she, if it's bronze, and I think it is. Um, I think you're looking at about 450, 450 to 550. Uh, I wouldn't part with it for less than that. I, I think you'd see see it for much more than that in an antique shop. Yeah, it's um, fine. I would say right between four and five hundred dollars. It's fabulous. Is that name on there? Is that the mill, or is that where it was made? No, nope, that's that the, the name of the person who made it. That's the artist's name. That's the artist's name. There would be a, a, a mark somewhere else, and then there may be one that I can't see. There, there should be a foundry mark. 
that would that would give the name, but it's French, without a doubt. So that was a nice bonus, I think. Yeah, I think so. That was, I, that's the best money I made on that. Is year. that right? Yeah. Good. <laughs> Thanks for bringing her. Okay. Uh, let's see, Carmen Olson. Polish artist. Uh huh. Canelba, 1879 to 1960. That looks that looks very very. I I think it is Canelba. So how did you get this? I went to a grad sale real early in the morning, and um, the lady that came to help the lady were sitting there talking. And they said, uh, this neighbor girl brought over, I wouldn't have ever noticed this. Uh huh. But they said, this neighbor girl brought over a painting and she asked me to sell it for her, and I just told her to set it there. Uh huh. So I looked for it and I saw it and I thought, that looks like something. <laughs> it does look, it does yeah. look like, I mean, the, you've got the child in the little. And uh, in so the paper I says, hat. How much, yep. I asked her, how much you want for this? She says, oh, a dollar. I said, sold. <laughs> Well, it's a it's a very sweet little image, and it's the kind of image that that this artist uh, Raymond Canelba did, is known for. Pictures, sweet pictures of, of children. Um, I'm guessing that this was probably printed and framed in the 1960s. So it's not real. It's not well. It's a it's a if, again if you look at it very closely. Under a magnifying glass, you can see that it's a dot pattern. So it's not an original work of art. It's a photomechanical print. But the other thing that I was going to say is, if you look at the edge of the mat, right here, all the way around, see how it's started to turn brown? Uh -huh. That's a sign of what's called mat burn. And mat burn occurs when you have a mat that is not archival. It has a high acid content, and it will, it will discolor uh, the medium, whatever medium was underneath it. In, in this case, paper. Um, now, while we were while we, you were talking about Canelba, I was also looking up some other of, of his images here, and there he is. <laughs> yeah. there's, a little, there's a little guy right there. So what does it what does it say about it? Um, Raymond Canelba. This was this was actually sold by a Polish uh, auction house. So of course everything is in is in yeah 1897 to 1960. Um, it says it's an offset print on paper. It's sold for 1,100 zlotys. <laughs> I don't know, and that was in when? That was in how long ago was that? That was in September of last year. So if you can find out what the exchange rate is on a Polish Zloty, it's an offset print just like this one. It's a photomechanical print. Oh, wow. So so I think that one dollar investment is worth a big pile of Zlotys now. <laughs> Whatever the exchange rate is. Did you say a thousand? Eleven hundred. Eleven hundred. Eleven hundred, okay. 1, 100. <laughs> yes. There you go. All right. Okay. <laughs> That was fun. Um, Christy Hollow. What, what do you have here? Ooh, that's pretty cool. So uh, what do we know about this? I just want to turn it right here and make sure everyone can see it OK. This wild and crazy <laughs> painting. What do we know about um, it? My grandmother got it in Toronto probably in the 70s. OK. And I looked up Alec Cohen, and he's English, and that's all I know. OK. So um, A. Cowan. So and who was Norma Jarvis? Was that a friend of hers? Oh, okay, okay. They, they wrote wrote her name on the back. Fifteen oh eight Wainwright. Interesting. City Lights, one hundred and seventy five dollars. So, it, it, it's marked A Cowan. So, who, would the A stood for what? Alec A L E C is what it says on the front. It's it's very 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 sixties. Uh, mm -hmm. It's it's. Painted on a on canvas that has been stretched over a piece of plywood, which is which is interesting. Um, let's uh, hold on here just a minute. Uh, etchings, paintings are out there. Alec Cowan is a pretty you know pretty well regarded uh, 
artist. Um, do you know? Do you remember what she paid for it? Well, it says 175 it's, on it, but I don't know if that's it. Says 175. <laughs> you know, a, a painting like this by Cowan sold not too long ago for about 200. I think it was 200, uh, two, either 200 or 225 dollars Canadian. Now the Canadian exchange rate is pretty good right now. I know that much. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, you know, mid-century modern is such a hot category right now. This would work beautifully in, in a mid-century modern uh, room. Um, I would say, you know, right around 300 bucks probably. I think that's, you know, it's not for everybody. No. I mean, it's not the, do you like it? Um, it's not for me. It's not for you, okay. <laughs> um, I would say, given Colin's track record, and the fact that it's a mid-century modern piece, I would I would think that you would be able to find a buyer at about three hundred bucks. Okay, cool. thanks. thanks. Thank you, Christy Elizabeth Emerson. Well, I mean, it's it's Ganesha. How did you get how did you get this little figure? Well, it is from my grandfather's okay. estate. He passed away in April and uh, my dad discovered it uh, when they were he and his sister were cleaning out the house and it was in this little Tupperware, but the paperwork indicates that he spent a lot of money on it. Really? Um, it was it's supposed to be Ruby Zoizit Zoizits. I don't know, Zoizit. Okay. Z O I S I T E. And then it's 1,902 carats. And uh, he bought it from someone in Canada. Okay. And he bought it six years ago. So. Okay. Well, um, uh, yeah, yeah, Ruby in Zoisit, perhaps? Yes. Um,. Well, first we should say that that this is this this is the elephant god Ganesha mm -hmm. in the in the uh, Hindu uh, you know uh, you know mythology, um, and um, the the you've you come across this you know pretty regularly. It's it's again carved Ganesha. I mean, there's another one right there. Mm -hmm. I didn't expect to find one quite that quickly, but it just popped right up when I. When I looked for it, and it's and it's ruby in it, it may be zoisiced or zoas. Yeah. There, there may be there may be a French pronunciation there. Z o i s i t e. Um, now, when you say that the paperwork indicated that he may have paid a lot for it, we, are we talking over a thousand dollars? Yeah, we think he got swindled. Okay. He was eighty six at the time that he bought it. Okay. He didn't tell anybody. Okay. So well, this we're looking piece, for confirma confirmation of that. Well, this piece actually was was offered at auction with an estimate of fifteen to eighteen hundred dollars. So now, but there's no one. They don't give any. It must be a contemporary piece because there's the name of the artist here. Mm. Um, and this was portrayed as an antiquity. Uh, no. Yes. Uh, I think that we can all agree that this is not an ancient piece of carving. Mm -hmm. um, so perhaps from that standpoint, he was misled, I think. Uh, you know, there's a way that age sits on a piece, uh, and um, this has the, all the hallmarks of a contemporary, you know, decorative object. Uh, having said that, the work of this, of this you know, uh, artist here um, you know, uh, they asked, it did not sell for that much, but mm -hmm. they estimated fifteen to eighteen hundred. So, but but I would say, um, as a decorative object, maybe a hundred, maybe a little more, right. a couple hundred bucks. Um, it's it's a lovely thing. It's just it's not what it purports to be. Right. It's 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 newer, so. Mm -hmm. But you know there are there are people out there who value them, quite highly, and this is you know, it's I think it's worth a little more research. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Great. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much for bringing it. My first Ganesha. Um. Thank you, Elizabeth. Al Johnson.
That's a pretty thing. Well, I don't uh, have any idea of where it come from, what it's worth, or what it is. Okay. <laughs> well, it's a it's a uh, a bisque vase, almost certainly German. Uh, how did this come into your life? Well, uh, I uh, during World War II, I was in Odessa, Russia, uh -huh. and uh, the uh, uh, the city of Odessa had a bazaar, a huge gathering of all the things that they had, the Russians had taken from places they, yep. they had uh, yep. conquered. Yep. And uh, you could buy at this bazaar, you could buy a, a marble or a camel, or they had it all. Sure. And, uh, and I saw that my mother collected vases, and uh, I decided that uh, she probably would like that one. One which she did, she did. So, th so this belonged to your, to your. You brought this home for mom from Russia. Yeah. Oh, that's that's nice. That's nice. Um, again, it's a, it's a porcelain bisque, with, in the style is it, it, it's kind of emulating a Wedgwood Jasper Ware. Mm. Jasper Ware has these dusty, uh, green blue bases with this white overlay. This, this decoration you see here was actually sliced off and then laid right on so that, um, uh, and it's got, it's a water nymph. You can see the, the cattails and water lilies and everything around the, the back here. Very, very nice. Uh, right around the turn of the century, I would say, right circa 1900. It has a little bit of an Art Nouveau influence, but it's, a, I think, a little more like late Victorian. Um, so do you remember what you paid for it? Uh, well, I didn't. It didn't cost me very much because when we went into Russia, they were not on the gold standard. So right, mo their mo money was uh, dollars were of no value. Right, and so they gave each uh, uh, serviceman uh, three hundred dollars in in rubles. rubles. Sure. And of course, as always, the crap game started. <laughs> <laughs> of course, <laughs> and I got really lucky, and you, oh, I, and, good. and I won most of the money <laughs> on our ship. <laughs> so okay, I, I uh, at the uh, bazaar I paid seventeen hundred dollars, uh, American dollars. Really, equal to that. My goodness. But in in my uh, goodness. Well, it didn't matter to me because. Right. If I had Russian rubles left over, yeah, when I left Russia, uh, yeah, you wouldn't there. You wouldn't have nothing you could do with them, no right? Value. Yeah. Right, and and you know you couldn't even spend them in a crap game. No, <laughs> well, you could, you could do that. <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, uh, Seventeen hundred dollars. Uh, I I think you would have a tough time getting that much for it today. Mm -hmm. Um, it's a beautiful thing, but it is, it, except for a style number on the bottom, it is, it is absolutely unmarked. Mm -hmm. But I would say it's definitely uh, German or Austrian, uh, definitely turn of the century, uh, in, a, in a kind of a style that, that is similar to what they call Jasper Ware, which was made by Wedgwood. Um, I think today if you saw this at an antique shop, uh, 300 maybe, maybe a little bit more. Hmm. Uh, it's a beautiful thing, uh, but you know, and, and, and your mom liked it, and that's really she all did. that matters. She did, she enjoyed yeah. it very much. Yeah. And, and, uh, and now it's now it belongs to you again. Now it belongs to me. Okay. <laughs> I, I, I nursed it all the way back from Russia without breaking off all the handles. Amazing. That, that was quite an <laughs> undertaking. And, and ab absolutely amazing. Well, thank you for bringing it. Thank you. Okay. Stephanie Lindemann. Hi. Oh, that's pretty. Well, I have tried to um, look online to sure. see if I could find the history of it. Uh, uh -huh. I was not able to find the manufacturer. Okay. Um, and it is on here. Yep. Um, yep. How did you get this? It belonged to my mother. I don't okay. know where she got it. Okay. I mean, it's a, it's a, you know, a, a big, beautiful, probably a churn. Right. Uh, it would have had a lid and it would have had a dasher. 
Um, and it's marked on the bottom, or I see on the top here. Uh, I think it says Thayer and Clark. Yeah. If you wet it, uh -huh. it shows up better. Oh, it does, doesn't it? And Clark, Stone, I think it is Thayer. New, what is it? I think it's New Ipswich. Ipswich, okay. Maybe. Um, well, it's a wonderful example of uh, salt glaze stoneware from the late 19th century. Um, designs like this uh, have, a, uh, have a hierarchy in terms of the popularity of the decoration. If it's just a stencil or if it's just a, a, a very simple flower, that's the least ex ex you know, uh, popular. This one is a, a beautiful cobalt bird on a branch. Um, and so that's kind of like in the middle. The, okay. the, the most expensive of these are decorated with deer. Oh, uh, larger animals. Va various other animals. Human faces are very, very rare. Those are the most expensive. Okay. Deer. But, but birds, birds are pretty good. Birds are pretty good. So, um, and I mean, the, you, you, when you think about how this was made, stoneware was really the, the first Tupperware. Everybody, everybody used stoneware for storing and uh, uh, foodstuffs, mm -hmm. and also in this case, as a churn, um, when this was made at a certain point in the kiln when it was being fired, the workers would take handfuls of salt and they would throw it uh -huh. into the into the kiln, and it would vaporize and bond onto the bodies huh. of the. And that's why they call it salt glazed stoneware. So um, let's just see here. I also was told to try to clean it uh -huh. and to dip it into a tub of um, bleach water for a day, sure. and then put in fresh water and let it sit for the same amount of time. Sure. You, and I tried that and nothing happened. And nothing it didn't take any no. of the any of the uh the the the, the cream white or the, whatever it is. The yeah. well I mean I think that's that's a that looks like a, a hard water. That looks like scale. Oh. You know, it might be lime. Okay. Um you know you can also use uh vinegar, which would be, you know, that's another that's okay. another I did not try that. Yep. Right. Yep. There was an N Clark that uh, made pieces like this, um, but not. What does that say? It sure does it, look it like fair, doesn't yeah. it? Anyway, there were there were, for instance, here is an N. Clark, and uh, let me just see, because it does say Ipswich. Mm -hmm. No. Is the size of any significant value? Um, no, I mean, this is a pretty standard size. Sure. Pretty standard size. Um, hold on here, come back. There are, there are lots and lots of examples here of uh, decorated <laughs> churns. Now, for instance, here's one with a deer, beautiful oh, deer see. walking uh -huh. in the trees. $1,800, uh -huh. okay? Um, and here's one of just a plain, simple flower on a jug. Okay. Um, 275. Uh, let's find one with a bird. Let's find one with a bird. There's one. Oh, uh-huh. Uh, on a bird on a branch, similar to this one. Uh, Athens, New York. So this may have been even the same, the same area. Um, I would say in today's market, which is softer for these pieces mm -hmm. than, it, than it used to be, uh, but I would say today, um, good condition. I mean, it's missing, it's missing the lid, and uh, there's, some, there's some pock marks in the, gold, in the cobalt, but I would still say about 300 bucks, oh, 250 okay. to 300. Um, it's a lovely example, and there are several uh clarks out there um given enough time i'll bet we could we could translate that you know figure out exactly what the name of the, the company is um the fact that it says new ipswich helps so nice example okay
Thank Thanks you. for bringing it. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Ann Peterson. Hi. My dad's always collected books. Okay. Most of his life, and this is part of a set. These these look like handmade books. So can I open this? Sure. Okay. I want to be careful. Be oh, that's the back. That's the back. Uh, he bought them mm -hmm. in, the early, <coughs> in the early 40s. Yeah. Yeah. So these most of these look like uh, it's in German. It's dated 1829, and it's an ex- Library in the library of R. A. Peterson. That was him. That's him. Oh, what a great! Instead of instead of an ex libris, he's got it stamped in there. Very interesting. Um, so a, a lot of these are religious texts. Do you know this is this mentions? Um, it looks like Goethe. Do you know what the text is about? No, okay. I don't. He bought them in New York City for 10 cents a piece. Really? Back then. There is a website that I use uh, for looking up information on old books. Okay. And I'm always happy to share this because it's a really good resource. It's, it's called abebooks.com. A-B-E like okay. Abe Lincoln. Okay. Books.com. And it's a worldwide network of sellers of used, rare, and out-of-print books. That's what it looks like. It's free. Okay. You don't have to register. You don't have to do anything. You just go there and search. And you can search by author, by title, and by keyword. Now, these are, these are handmade books on handmade paper. Looks like some of the, some of the pages still need to be right. split. Yeah. And that's quite common for, for this era. Um, and it says Philip Mellon, M-E-L-A-N, let me just see if we can find this here. M E L A N C H T H O N. I don't know. Uh, huh. They are, the, good heavens, there's a lot of them out there. Great evangelical preachers of yesterday, including this guy whose name I can't pronounce. <laughs> so, um, so they are religious texts, and, and most of these are. Um, now, because ABE is made up of uh, retailers, I tend to think that their okay. values are kind of high. Okay. Uh, but what they have that I find very helpful is that they have... Uh, really detailed condition reports. So you can compare the condition of your books with the condition of the books being offered on the website. Now we know that this book is dated 1829 and when you put that in there it comes back with 23 results. Now some of these are, are new reprints. I want to see if I can find an early one. Uh, yep, they're all in German. Hold on here. I just want to see if I can find one like this one. Um, in three volumes. So you've got three volumes here. Someone is asking $114 for a set of these books. Uh, but the condition is all written in German. So I can't tell you what the, what the, what the you know, how to compare the text. Um, I think that he was a smart buyer to, to acquire these. I don't think that they're worth, I mean, that would be $30 a piece. That's, you know, and that's only plus. three, aren't there six and, total? Yeah. yeah. Oh. Six yeah. in the set. We've got yeah. three more at home. Yeah, yeah. And this says, this says uh, six and three, six, five, yep. Philip Melanchthon, how, if that's how his, his name is pronounced, uh, with, with Goethe. And there's, there's Goethe's name. It's, it's actually Goethe. Um, so, okay. you can look that up there and, okay. and find ABE more information books. about abebooks.com. Okay. okay, great. Thank you very much. Thanks for coming. Lila Engstrom. That's me. That's, That's, then, then you're next. Thank you. Are you this evening? Well, I'm I'm having fun. How about Good. you? I am too. Good. I enjoy this. Everybody having fun? Yes. yes. Good. Good. <clears throat> Little 
sellers wrapped up. Okay. Oh, look at that. Those guys are pretty sweet. Aren't they? How did you get these? My mother-in-law, uh, we were cleaning her home out quite a few years ago. Uh -huh. they, they belonged to her sister-in-law, and I believe they were sold in White Rock, Minnesota, which is a little wide spot in the road not far from here. Okay. In, in an old general store. And she said that when... She was getting rid of some of her sister-in-law's things that an antique dealer came to the house and of all the things she had sitting out, she wanted these. And she said, no, those aren't for sale. And she said, I would love to have them because I think they're worth quite a bit. Now, this is a long time ago. Right. So I was always curious. Well, they're, they're absolutely gorgeous little, little figurines. And they're clearly marked except... Um, well, I should say they're marked. It's just very, very difficult to see what the impressed name, unless you happen to know. No, I don't. What it says. Um, it's possible. Yeah, they, they've got to be German. And they are definitely German. But, oh man, it is so hard to see the name. Um, they're really, really gorgeous. I uh, like the colors. The colors are beautiful. Mm -hmm. They're actually kind of a, uh, almost a Majelica style. Really? Uh, yeah, but oh, they are, cool. but they are, but they're bisque. Mm -hmm. They're porcelain bisque. They're German. Um, hold on here just a minute. They are absolutely fabulous. Um. The date would be right around 1900. Um, and this was um, actually uh, one of a series. Oh. So let me just see here. Let me just see. They look an awful lot like those guys yes, right there. Yes, they do. Mm -hmm. Don't they? Mm -hmm. Now, this guy is holding the bat out in front of him. And I think it mm -hmm. might actually be a wooden bat. This okay. one, he's resting it on his shoulder. Mm -hmm. uh, German bisque, which is that. Oh, Hubach. That's interesting. Hubach was a, was a doll manufacturer. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the brother is Hubach. So you find them in different poses. Look at those guys. That's Look cool. at that guy. Yeah. Hubach is the name. Okay. Um, so let's just open this up and see what it says. One pitcher with right finger loss. Uh, it's not, I'm not getting it to open up here. Missing bat and small chip on base. Well, I mean, those, those were damaged. These are perfect, right? Mm-hmm. These two guys sold for $1,900. Oh, well. <laughs> well. <laughs> well, really. Um, now, now, they're kind of all over the map. We know they're German. We know they're <laughs> Hubach. Okay. And we know they're early, at the turn of the century, maybe early 20th century. This one, I really like him a lot. Oh, isn't that Isn't cute? that great? But yes. look at the bases. The, these, they're on these rocky bases. Mm -hmm. 450 for the one. Mm -hmm. um, there's, there's two of them. The one on the, the one, this one on the right sold for 600. This one sold for 150. So they're all over the place. Mm -hmm. They are absolutely all over the place. And these two sets right there were offered in May and August of this year, and they did not sell. Mm -hmm. So, what does that tell us? What's the bottom line? Uh, I think they're I think they're fabulous. I think they're probably worth at a minimum a couple hundred a piece. Okay. Uh, but they are just totally cool. Well, I love them. Oh, don't you? I, <laughs> yes, I do. I do. Too. Yep. I absolutely love them. But now, yes, we know that there are other figures out there, different poses, different 
mm-hmm. you know, I wasn't uniform. Aware of that. There you go. Yeah. Okay. And then could you just take a, a glance at my bracelet? My mother bought that for me in 1954 in Phoenix. Uh-huh. And I think the turquoise is especially nice. It's a very, very nice um, uh, a sterling probably, but I don't see any mark on it. <coughs> there is no mark on it. And if it's not marked sterling, it's probably coin silver. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah, very nice, probably. 40 or 50 bucks. Okay. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Um, that was Lila. Thank you, Lila. You're welcome. Judy Forsman. Oh, my, look at that. So, so how did you get this? Salvation Army for $5. Really? It's on the back is written, uh, Skansen, Stockholm, and Seglora Kirka, perhaps, maybe that's the maybe that's the person who who did this wonderful needlepoint. Boy, the colors are just amazing. Oh, David, nice. You know, so often when I see these, they're faded or they're water stained. Um, you know, and this one this one is in fantastic condition. You know, you know, absolutely, absolutely. Um, so, how do you display this in your home? Oh, it's hanging in the kitchen. Okay, not in the sun. No. Nope. Not in the sun. Good, <laughs> no. good, good. The thing to remember about these, and this probably dates from the 1960s, I okay. would say, mm-hmm. is that when this was framed, the glass and the and the needlepoint uh, are in contact. There's no spacer, so it's easy for things to get trapped in there, for things, for dust, moisture, um, you know. So, but I mean, again, the, the condition of this is just absolutely gorgeous. You paid five bucks for it. Yes. Um, I, I wish I could say you could add a zero to that, that it's about a $50 <laughs> piece. It may be not quite that good, maybe $25 or $30. Okay. Looks good on the wall. Good. <laughs> Thank you. Yep. Dallas Forsman. <laughs> little butter press, I believe. There you go. Yep, that's exactly what it is. There, there you go. So this one is a flower. You know, as a category, uh, country antiques has has really taken a hit. I mean, in the 1980s and early 90s, you know, Country Living magazine would come out with these lush photo spreads and have all these beautiful, you know, uh, objects to decorate your home with. And and now. Uh, they don't have those anymore. How did you get this? At an auction in McGregor, Minnesota about 40 years ago. Okay. Um, so you just bought it all on its own? Right. Okay. Um, you know, the decoration uh, can have an impact. Uh, the These kind of, you know, the plunger style are the, the most common. The, if you found a lollipop one, those they're a little bit more special. Um... For instance, here's a whole grouping of them. Just the just the press itself. There's the sheaf of wheat, and another one. The whole collection of these sold in April for 150 bucks. So so about, about 40 bucks a piece. So what'd you pay for that? Do you remember? Twelve. Was it twelve? Twelve bucks. You could double your money. Good. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. <laughs> And to to round off the, the, uh, the second hour, I, I want to make sure I have this correct, um, Heidi. It says the library has a naked lady. Yes, that's true. It's not me. Okay. <laughs> oh, that's this is the, this, this program is rated G. <laughs> so, what did you? Oh, oh, the the contortionist. The contortionist. Oh my goodness, because she's been sitting over there. She has. She's she's very she very common. In many different ways. I'm sure. So, um, uh, how how did the library get this poor unfortunate? <laughs> well, it's uh, I'm not sure where we actually got it. Jenny, do you know? No, I don't know. But it's been I know we've had it for over 20 years. Well, I I, I don't you know, think so. 
It looks like the work, actually, it looks like the work of a Rochester artist. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, Chuck uh, Gagnon. Uh, Is Chuck. It a Granlin? I thought it was a Granlin Heidi. I'm not aware. Is there is there a mark on it anywhere? I have tried not to look. <laughs> <laughs> oh come on! Now wait a minute. It's right there. Where is it? It's right there. There it is. It is Grandland. That's what I thought it was. G R A N L U N D. Okay. Well, let's see what we can find. Um, well, you know what? I never noticed that. There you go. All and it's got ones. a. It's 1980. Okay. So you know it's got it's got a few years on it here. Let's just see. Um, she's you know I I think she's designed to to turn. Let's see. I think you had her just 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 right. No, like, like maybe that. like that. Yeah. I think that's how she's supposed to go. Okay. Ouch. I um, know. I'm telling you. Um. Well, let's see. Paul T. Granland. Um, I'm waiting for this to open, and it's not opening. Well, I think I think that's her, yeah, or something something similar. Something, something similar. Yeah. No, that's a different pose. Yeah. Uh -huh. She's got her head hand behind her 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 head, but she's she's. <laughs> So Paul Granlund, female nude, um, three no four years ago, four hundred and twenty-five dollars. So I mean, there's another one here, two seventy-five, and another one two. Okay. You know, there's a a much simpler one, not nearly as accomplished. And then this one there. Those are all by Granlund. So I would say, you know, about four hundred bucks. Oh, okay. There you go. All right. Find her a comfortable spot. I I will. I'm very careful about lifting her. Okay, okay. Cindy Molnar has a painting. All right, let's turn let's okay. turn it around so everybody can see it. And I can't read the signature. My in-laws bought it at the Walker Art Gallery probably 40 years ago. Uh huh. And. Uh, I can't read the signature. It's so a it's a silk screen. Silk screen. Okay. Yep, and and it and it it looks very. I was going to say 60s, but I yeah. see here there's a date on it that says 57. Uh huh. And um, Robert. I don't know. It it could be it could be Huck. It could it looks like H U. It might be H U C H. Hard to tell. Hard to tell. Um. But it's very, very, we, we saw a, a piece like this earlier. Uh, it's very mid-century, which means that it's, it's a very popular category right now, yeah. mid-century modern. Um, you know, it's, every time I see something like this that has a, that, that you know, with a name that, that it's close to something that I can see and, you know, you're not really sure. Yeah. I wish I had half an hour to, to sit and, and do some more research on it. But, you know, honestly... I think that this is the type of piece that you can just take on its own merits. It's a very much in the in the mid-century style. Um, it would go perfectly in any, you know, uh, in, in any room decorated with furniture from IKEA uh, today. Um, uh, so, do you have this in your home? Yes. Okay. We have, we have it in the living room. Actually. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You know, I, it it has a it has a very um, a very distinctive. Uh, palette. I mean, I, I think I, I like the kind of the, the sage and the and the kind of the, you know the, the very limited palette that it has. I like it. Um, do you remember what they paid for it? I don't know. Okay. They may they didn't know either, and I've never taken it down there to ask if they would. And I think know and I think it. you know, again, given given enough time, we could probably decipher the name. There's nothing on the back. No. Okay. There was nothing. Um. I would say four to five hundred, and that's with knowing nothing about the artist's record. It's just as a category, mid-century is very good right now. So I would say four to five hundred dollars. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Ray Meglick. Hey, look. 
<laughs> Pretty nice. So how did you how did you get the this old gumball? Uh, this is from uh, my mother-in-law. Uh -huh. They uh, owned a store over oh, in Peanuts. Mar Peanut. Yeah. yeah. Peanut dispenser. Where and, was it? In Martell, Wisconsin. Okay. So it came with the store when they took over, and uh, we've been just storing it at our house. And it's a beautiful thing. Cast iron. Mm -hmm. Cast iron. Uh, and it's in good shape. Yeah. It's in it's in really, really good shape. Does the mechanism, as far as you know, does it work okay? Uh, I'm not sure. It looks might be a little bit. Yeah, that's little okay. Tight. I didn't, because I didn't people, touch it. So, uh, it's it's no. really just a just a uh, you know a, a decorative object mm -hmm. today. Yeah. But it, it's still got the, the decal there on the globe. The globe is absolutely the original one. Um let's see. And the date on it I I would think would be nineteen twenties probably. Um I mean here's one fancier a little fancier yeah. and it's got the gum in it yeah. but if you look at the base mm -hmm. you look at the flare and you yep. can see right there patented so this is the exact same base the top is a little bit different yeah. um, they they're just storing gumballs in it because it does say a peanut machine 300 bucks okay I would say uh, when was that that was in 09 so maybe oh Two to three hundred. It's a gorgeous yeah. thing. Yeah. Thanks Very for good. bringing it. Thank you. Okay. And Sandy. This is metal. Boy, is this is that <clears throat> screaming Art Deco or what? Yeah. There are some really things cool. that are kind of whisper Art Deco, and then there are things like this that scream Art Deco. So this is also a a you well, know as a category. You know, coin ops come in three basic, uh, you know, uh, uh, classifications. There is a, a vending machine, mm -hmm. there is a trade stimulator, and there are gambling devices. Mm -hmm. And they all together they, they make up they make up coin ops. Um, but this one has a chain that you pull. Yep, and it works. Does it? Pulls. Okay, I don't yeah. want to pull it. I don't yeah. want to pull it too too hard. No, it says nickel. Okay. On it, but I thought it was peanut, but. Do you think that's what it is? Or? You know, I I don't think that there is enough. This couldn't have held too many peanuts. No. See, the globe on that one, yeah. you would have had a lot of peanuts in it. So let's just see here. Have you done any research on no, it? No, I haven't. Great original form. Um, let's just, and again, absolutely late 20s or early 30s. Um, sometimes these are very, very... Very fancy. There's a double one. Look oh, at wow. that. And with the decal and everything. <laughs> but what does it say? One cent coin op. It does say peanut. See, okay. there's a single one. Wow. Now, there's a handle yeah, missing from the top. Yes. But look at the colors on that. Um, in 2010, the pair of those, and that's a side-by-side, -side, sold for 200 and. Fifty dollars, mm -hmm. hundred and a quarter. I would say a hundred to a hundred and a quarter for this one. Um, very cool. Thanks for bringing them. Right. Well, okay. You. Greg Shea. What do you got? Well, I've got two of these. Okay. They're uh, signed prints by Justin Wells, who is a Oklahoma artist. Okay. And from what I found out, his studio, his home, and everything burnt down in 01. All the, a lot of his originals were lost. Really? I've researched. I have not been able to find either one of these prints okay. in his catalog. So I'm thinking they were probably in his studio when it burned. Okay. And I think that was in 2001. Well, they they're very much in the in the they're very much in the 70s style. And there's a couple of couple of reasons. That, that I say that. I mean, one of them is, is dated there, 77, but there's another one, and we talked about this earlier, and you're starting to get a little bit of that here, is Matt Byrne. 
-hmm. If you see the edge of the mats, they're starting to turn brown. They have a high acid content, and so they will tone or discolor the, the paper that's underneath them. So how did you get these? I bought them at a flea market. Okay. In probably 1990. Okay. In Fort Worth, Texas. Well, they are they are of uh, you know in in pretty good condition, except for a little bit of a little mat burn issue. Um, let's see here. Original watercolors by Justin Wells, and and we we should say that that he died in 2008. He's no longer with us. Right. Um, here's an original, and again, it's a cowboy themed. There's mm -hmm. an original one there of uh, watercolor. Another one, horses right there. Um, the one with the cowboy sold for $160. The one of the horses sold for $70. Uh, so what'd you pay for these, may I ask? Two dollars and fifty cents each. Two fifty. <laughs> well, I think that was you know because they are are numbered prints. They're signed and numbered. I mean, we you know this was an edition of two hundred. It looks like for both of them, so that there there there's more of them out there. Two fifty a piece. Well, that was still pretty cheap. Um, I would say. Forty to fifty dollars each. Okay. I think you did just fine. Yeah, I did too. Okay. You <laughs> enjoyed them for a while. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Thanks you. for bringing them. Yep. All right. That was Greg Charlotte Shay. I'm nervous. Oh, don't be nervous. It's, it's just not very often I get to share my rocks. With oh, someone. okay. Well, that's very nice. And we just don't know how if these are just so common. Uh huh that they're not worth um, right or oh. if they should be given to a museum or okay something okay. like that so <laughs> you have a you have a a, a large um you know uh, i don't think this was a weapon i think this was some kind of a grinding tool but it would have been attached to a stick how did you get these are these all field finds these are all field finds. okay and yeah. that's and that's typically where where you would find them I mean, this is a this is a you know a grinding rock. This is a as well you know um, the I'm sure that there are that there are s some small local historical societies which would okay. love to have these okay. and would and would show them off. Where did they come from? Um, this one is from out by Lake Billsby. It okay. was found in a flower bed. Digging deep. Really? <laughs> yes. Yeah. This one and uh, these two are from around Winnebago, from when my husband was a little boy. Okay. And this is from around Jackson, Minnesota, okay. from when I was little. Okay. Yep. That's a that's a scraping tool. Um, you know, for we've probably... had them for a long time, and it's so kind of ridiculous. But, well, but, but you know, they are real parts of our history. They and and they and these are all you know very early, um, you know, Mississippian culture. I mean, these are these pieces are thousands of years old. I'm okay. sure okay. they're all pre-Columbian. Um, you know, you have you have um, you know various. For instance, here's a collection of various grinding tools right here. It has a scraper, and these just sold at auction two weeks ago for uh, $190 for the whole set. I mean, there's one right there, 70 Again, that's a grinding tool. There you go. Very similar, very similar to this one, $140. So there's a market for these pieces. Um, you know, again, there's a couple more. I heard once that it's important to archive where they're from. Yes. To and, write. And typically when you see pieces like this in a collection, they'll have a little paper notation yeah. on it okay. saying who found it and when. Okay. Um, so, so that's very helpful. Um, this is a beautiful piece. Well, that's what we've always thought. We yeah. love rocks, though, so we yeah. don't know if we're just. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. I think, okay. I think, I think, I think it's a beautiful piece too. But you're right. You gotta love rocks. Yeah. 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 Um, so, I mean, in terms of value, you're probably looking at you know, two or three hundred dollars okay. 
for the whole grouping, yeah. but but if you can, if if you wanted to, I would say that someone, a, an institution that would really appreciate these would be the local historical society okay. from the land where they near where the they land where they were from. found. Yep. Okay. Yep. Okay. Good to know. Okay. Because otherwise they just get lost in a flower bed. That's exactly someday. right. <laughs> and you hate to see that. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Thanks. Yes. Thanks for sharing your rocks. Yeah. <laughs> see. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. You bet. Val Swentick. We haven't seen much jewelry here tonight. So what do we know about this? Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> It it is a it is a lovely filigree uh, uh, pendant and necklace, um, late Victorian. How did you get this? From my mother. Okay. I don't it's, know how she got it. <laughs> it's it's decorated with enamel, and um, then this big stone. I I'm not sure what type of stone that is. It lo almost looks like a kind of a pink turquoise. But the other, the rest of it is is decorative enamel. Um, very pretty. It almost looks like tourmaline. Um, the market for costume jewelry is pretty good, if it's marked. Uh, unmarked costume jewelry is a tough sell, and this one I don't see any mark on it. But it's better than average casting, better than average manufacturer. Manufacturer, I should say. It's a beautiful, beautiful little piece. In uh, if you saw this in a in an antique shop today, hmm, thirty five or forty dollars, I would say. Okay. More than the Derby. Thank you. Okay. Hi. Hi. So these these are your these are your treasures. Well, actually, I found them either on the farm or. Recently in our garage. Okay. <laughs> so I don't know. Um, I liked them. They are. I mean, well, this one, you know, little little handled tray. If this had belonged to my grandmother, this would have been full of dusty ribbon candy. Oh. Grandma thought we all liked ribbon candy. <laughs> so she kept filling filling up the dish until it congealed into one what? giant ball of ribbon candy with a fine coating of dust, dust. <laughs> on top. Um, you know, these. This one has a very, a very faint kind of a worn design. You know, kind of scrolly kind of Victorian design. Um, in terms of value, um, maybe two dollars each. Okay. Okay. They're pretty. They are pretty. I'll have to clean them up. Do you know a good way? Uh, just make if you wanted to use them. If you want to polish them up, make sure you use a cream, not an abrasive paste. Okay. Okay. Thanks. All right. So Carol Stabner. Now this is very okay. Then we'll just very carefully unfold it. And it's a crazy quilt. We, in fact, you know, we don't have to unfold anything more. No, Just, but this, this is what I want you to oh, see. Oh, you want to see? Oh, it's got ribbons. One. Okay. Minnesota State Fair. Um, oh, that's funny. And it's for, a, it's an advertising, actually, for Mahler Company Wholesale Wagons and Carriages, Harnesses, etc., St. Paul, 1885. Um, crazy quilts are are one of the the, the most common uh, type of folk art that I see in my programs, and they are they are beautiful and colorful, but they always have this condition issue when it's the silk, and it's the silk ones that go first. Oh. They just fall to pieces, and and so. But I love this here. Let's turn it around so everybody can see it right there. There's the. There's the, the, the advertising ribbon right there for the for the carriage manufacturer. So how did you get this? I work in a thrift store and it came into there. Oh, okay. Um, it's a beautiful piece. It does have condition issues. The conditions well, I, that I guess. that it's it's stained, uh, it's it's you know fallen to pieces uh, in spots. 
Uh, the date is, you know, very clear. I mean, we know that it's at, at least 1885, but it looks like it's about 1885. It's a light, it's a summer weight quilt, um, but, and it's been well loved. <laughs> and, and I think it's had most of the value loved right out of it. <laughs> I think the only thing that's value is this. I think the only thing is that one beautiful ribbon, which is still in pretty good shape. So, you know, typically a crazy quilt like this, in this type of condition, maybe thirty dollars. You know, uh, even if it was in mint condition, if it, uh, it, it, it's very rare to find a crazy quilt that comes up to a hundred dollars anymore today. But you know what? I think for that that one alone, that ribbon alone. 30 bucks is about right. Okay. Okay. What did you bring me? Well. Oh, my goodness. An old car. That is, that is an old car. <laughs> um, that was buried in the desert? In the dirt. Um, <laughs> oh, my gosh. So how did, you, how did you come by this? Well, my husband found it probably digging around or excavating. Okay. When we lived in the country. Okay. And our biggest question is, can it be cleaned? And how you would... I think, I think that the, 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 the time for restoration on this piece has passed. Okay. <laughs> um, uh, it, it's, it's, but having said that, it's still just, it, it makes a wonderful kind of sculpture today. Um, but in terms of putting money into it, no, I think it. I think it's. Beyond. I think it's gone round the bend. Okay. Yeah. So a, a wonderful. I mean, it's a 1930s, you know, uh, sedan. Uh, don't know who the manufacturer would have been. No, and there's some yeah. emblems in the front and yeah. the headlights, but yeah. it's yeah. tough to. Yeah. Some some little kid was playing in the. Playing in the dirt and, and forgot it, it. And okay, so it's a 1930s. So. Yeah, it's definitely okay. 30s. All right, thank okay, you. Okay, thank you. Well, it's a it's it's like a little knee hole desk they would call it because of the little cutout there. But do these open? No, no. they don't. They're just they're just yeah. they're just just the back so it can show. Oh, I see. I see. Well, that's odd. Um, you know, when this was made in the 1930s, uh, the, the furniture companies were just throwing every design motif they could think of at this. So you have a very, very uh, kind of formal design. You've got this, this kind of faux grain painting to make it look like, in fact, that may be a photographic effect on there. Um, how do you use this? We just got it in and we set stuff on it, plants on it. Sure, like sure. Um, you know, I think that's a I think that's a really good use for it. It's it's the, it might have been a little writing desk. It might have been a little hall table. Might have been a little lamp table or a parlor table. Um, the, re the reason I asked is my grandparents are from Germany. Uh huh. And they came from the East Coast traveling through, and they must have picked it up somewhere along the line. They could have. They absolutely could have. Um, it's it's. You know, it's the kind of thing you think, is this something that I should refinish uh, if it, you wanted to, to show it off a little more? I don't know that, that this is the piece. I mean, refinishing wouldn't hurt it, but in terms of value, if you could get $50 for this at a sale, I think you'd be doing very well. Okay. So thanks for bringing sure. it. Thank okay. You. She bought this at an estate sale uh -huh. for a uh, hundred dollars. Okay. She was told that uh, it was from 1930. It was a wedding gift. Okay. Um, and that it supposedly hung at the Walker. Okay. Arts if you would hold that for me, I will do that. Thank you. For, so now you can see what we've been talking about in terms of matte burn. It really, really stands out here. You can see the edges of this. Um, it's it's a it's an interesting, you know, pen and ink drawing. If if it's a, if it's an, an original drawing, it's hard to tell. It's hard to tell. 
Yeah, I think it looks like I think it looks like an original work, and there's some kind of, something that pass, might pass for a, a signature or a monogram down there. Mm -hmm. On the back, it just has Lexington Art, New York framers. Um, you know, it may have hung at the Walker. It may be it may be by a well-known artist. Mm -hmm. It it to me. Um, it doesn't. It's not a strong image, mm -hmm. uh, and so, without knowing anything about who did it, who created mm -hmm. it, I would say, uh, as an original pen and ink drawing, maybe fifty or sixty dollars. Um, That's. I'll tell her she got had. Well, <laughs> well, you don't have to tell her that. Oh uh, yeah, I, I really will kind of enjoy doing that. Oh, oh okay, well. <laughs> Far be it from me to blunt your enjoyment. Okay. Yeah. This is a pot, a vase, um, that we picked up at a local antique shop. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing on it but a number on the bottom. But right. we were told that they think it was bought in North Dakota. That could be. I think, I think that this is a piece of McCoy pottery. Really? Yes. From the 1930s, and I mean, all you have to do is look at it yeah, before, to know. Before they put McCoy on the bottom. But they, 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 McCoy in the 30s was not, was often using okay. a number system. Okay. Uh, but you're right, in the 30s they, they had a very distinctive McCoy mark. Um, I like it, it's kind of a, it's kind of a matte finish. Mm -hmm. 19, it's just screaming 1930s. Mm -hmm. Can I ask what you paid for it? hundred. A hundred dollars. I think that you might it might be difficult to get that for it today. How long ago was that? Six, seven years. Okay. Um, as as a as a you know uh, a remnant of the 1930s, it's a beautiful example. I think that a hundred is was a strong price to pay. Uh, to be perfectly honest, I, and and again, I don't know if you could get that for it today, mm -hmm. but you know. It's a beautiful. It's a beautiful piece. If we could just, if we could trace it. I mean, if, if it was found in North Dakota, if you were hoping that it was North Dakota School of Mines, is that mm -hmm. what you were hoping? Well, thought yeah. maybe. If it was North mm -hmm. Dakota School of Mines, a hundred dollars would be a bargain. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, but they would not have used a numbering system like okay. that. And that's a dry foot ring. That's mm -hmm. that's a McCoy foot okay. ring. I'm pretty sure. Well, I was more interested in what it was than the value, so it's I'll go it's look a in lovely nineteen thirties vase. Thank you. Thank you for bringing it. Okay, Mike and Katie, look at that. So what what do we know about this? Well, we really don't. We think there's a signature right there, but yep. we don't know yep. who it is. Yep. So we were just curious to learn more about it. Sure. Um, it's how did you get it? Um. An auction. An auction. Okay. It's probably, it was probably done in, I would say it's pretty, it's relatively new. That's what I was thinking. Um, it's, uh, these fabric spacers were all the rage in the 1960s, but I think this is more like the 1980s. Okay. Um, you know, at the earliest. Um, it, it was done fairly quickly. It's the kind of painting that would have been, um, uh, frankly, the, the kind of painting that w you might have found in a furniture store. Okay. If you go into the Can furniture store. for the other one then? <laughs> oh, <laughs> pardon? I brought two because I didn't know which one to bring up. Okay, okay. that's okay. So <laughs> This one's not as exciting as maybe the other one is. I don't know. Well, that's, that's okay. This is pretty exciting. <laughs> there, is a, there is a, you know, what looks like a signature there in the, in the along the shoreline, I'm not sure what it is, but this would have been done, you know, fairly quickly. Um, and again, furniture stores need paintings like this, so that, you know, to decorate their walls, so mm -hmm. that when people go in to buy their their bedroom suites or their living room suites, they they say, well, you need a sofa sized painting, mm -hmm. and that's what this is. So, what'd you pay for it at the auction? Oh, like twenty five dollars, I think. You know, that's about right. Okay. I would say that was a fair price. <laughs> Okay. okay. Thank cool. you. Yeah. Thanks. You bet. Okay. We haven't we haven't seen too many books tonight. That one. Well, that's pretty. I've looked up online. I've I found the book, but I haven't seen that one. Online. That one is very pretty. We were talking a, a little bit earlier about 
um, a website that I use for old books, and I'm always happy to share, um, you know, information about that website, and it's called abebooks.com. Um, now, this one, I like the it looks like the, it missing. looks like there's a few pages missing in the front, mm -hmm. um, but it, it's Heman's Illustrated Landscape series of poets uh, let me see and it's got this beautiful little inset panel on the cover I've seen just the plain uh -huh. cover books but I, I haven't seen the one with the enamel on there so. okay well let me just see here very quickly again there's abebooks.com so if you have a lot of books this is a good website to use okay Uh, Felicia Hemans is the name. Um, let's see. I'm just trying to find one with this little inset piece on the cover because there's almost a thousand of them oh boy. that are listed here. But again, what they what ABE Books does is they have very very detailed condition reports, so you can compare the condition of of your book with theirs. Mm -hmm. I think missing pages, the gilt page edges are good, corner bumps are pretty serious, the binding is okay, and if you look, right, you can just see someone reaching up and pulling it out. You do it without even thinking it, mm -hmm. but that's what happens to the top of the top of the spine. Um, maybe 15 or 20 dollars I would say okay. for that one. And then these Shakespeare. Are, these are all yeah. just different volumes, but okay. they seem to be old. So. <laughs> they are. They are old. Um, Collier. Yeah, this was a this was a subscription series. Um, they're okay, but they're, they're I would say just a few bucks a piece. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Thanks for bringing them. Thank you. Okay. Well, was that the big finish, Heidi? That was it. That was it. Well, thank you all for coming. I hope you had fun. I know I did. And again, please take my cards and, and you know, I hope to see you again in another program. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.